just the noise alone that it makes is impressive. So, you know, there's that, but what it does. So we are looking at electronic parts being placed onto this circuit board, not soldered, but just uh, plopped down right where they need to go. They're being placed, exactly, and this machine will install the components. These are uniform components, components that are all relatively and basically the same size. Um, and we'll just let it run its sequence here. fault there. So that resistor he's holding, it was uh, placed up kind of uh, in a big rack we have over here. They're all on rolls and those are fed into the machine. That's correct. So there's a whole sequence of controls or sequence of components that's been dialed in according to where the machine will move with the most efficiency to have that component installed. There's also uh, polarity to be considered. Yep. So that's why you have the complete 180 ability to, to, you know, once it's over here, the machine only installs a component one way. It's only loaded into the sequence one way. So the table has to spin to make the stuff fit. So it's amazing. It's, it's, uh, it's, it's pretty remarkable to think somebody that could come up with a machine like this, at least in my opinion. I've always marveled at this particular part of the process. But what you get here, again, it's not soldered. The components get crimped to be held into place. So, so here we are. And essentially you get anywhere from you know, 75 to 100 to 150 components that are installed in you know, a minute. All right, Tian, here we have non-uniform parts being put in. That's right. These are all the components that uh, are of widely varying size. You can see here we've got uh, filter caps, relays, sockets. Um, if you look a little closer over there, we've got LEDs, uh, a bunch of different stuff. That's it's really uh, there are machines which could install all of these oddly sized components, uh, but they would take up the size of this whole room. And ultimately, it's much better for us to have this machine here, which is uh, not a, a totally modern piece of machinery, but it's yet totally appropriate for what we're trying to do here. Um, again, there's a sequence installed into the brain of this machine, and it moves the board to where a part uh, needs to be installed. There's a, a light, one that's blinking to indicate polarity, and another that's static to kind of uh, tell the person where the component's gonna be installed. And when the component gets installed and it moves on to another component, the bin spins up and opens up to the next component that's supposed to be installed into the location where the machine moves. So it's, it's a very simplified process of pointing out where X component goes. The only variable is what gets loaded into this machine. And obviously that's important, but ultimately these folks have been doing this for uh, a very, very long time. Basically all of the non-uniform components have been installed here wires, sockets, LEDs, speaker jacks, etc. And what's going to happen with this circuit board is it's going to roll around and meet up with the wave solder machine. The wave solder machine will basically provide a nice even wave of solder across the whole board that gets drawn up through the terminals and connected to the leads on the bottom of the circuit board. From a pool of molten solder. It's where the terminator part comes in, exactly. <laughs> is, you know, you reach in there and Arnold Schwarzenegger's gonna jump out any minute. That's amazing though, because uh, it's precise. By hand, that would be hours. In fact, let's go take a look at that right now. So this is the machine. There's the pool of molten lava. This is the wave solder machine. And, and as you'd pointed out, it's a very straight ahead process. This is not rocket science. This is what people have been doing for years and years and years with, with circuit board manufacturing in general. You have a, a bath of solder here, and it's actually not uh, quote unquote bathing right now. There's a trough in the middle. And when a circuit board passes up the conveyor, at this point, this is a heater, a preheater, if you will, that heats the circuit board up before it actually hits the molten solder. But that little trough starts circulating to create a bath. The conveyor is set to the exact height so that the circuit board just goes above the circulation of the bath. And again, 
the solder is drawn up through the terminal sticking through the bottom of the board and, and drawn into the circuit board to create a nice even wave of solder, hence the name. Uh, but again, as far as this not being rocket science is concerned, the only variables here are the speed of the conveyor, the temperature of the solder, and ultimately the rake of the conveyor as well. And, and that's all stuff that has sort of been predetermined, A, by us and our experience as to what works, but predetermined in general by industry, which says that these are the ways that wave soldering works well. So when people talk about uh, poor soldering practices of, of a particular manufacturer, that's the reason I like to bring up the idea of, of the, the fact that this isn't rocket science. There's some really pretty well concrete, predetermined approaches to doing this. And uh, there just aren't a lot of variables, and, and it works great. This is how it's done.